Black people are hated all over the world, discriminated against all over the world, and are described as the moral problem in society. Welcome to the African Leadership Series, where we bring you great inspirational speeches of African leaders. Amanda! Amanda! Thank you very much. Commissars and fighters, we are gathered here as the EFF and marks a great and significant milestone not only for itself, but for the liberation of all of our people and the return of the land. A decade ago, we undertook the task of building a movement that will, place, that will be a place for refugee, for the poor, a shoulder to lean on for the abused, a source of strength for the exploited, a place where those who have historically been forgotten can find their identity and ultimately liberate themselves. Our glorious movement was born through consensus of the poor and consensus of those who had come to realize that political freedom achieved in 1994 was meaningless without economic freedom. Our movement was formed on the ideological basis and correct understanding that our political system had fallen victim to the hands of the corrupt few who had no interest of achieving the ultimate aim of a generation of anti-colonial struggles, namely the return of the land and the mineral wealth of African people. We are a movement that was formed on the objective analysis of the conditions that confront our people, which was and remains increasingly the levels of poverty, continued inhuman living conditions, which perpetuate apartheid racism, spatial planning, landlessness, joblessness, racial inequality, and massive exclusion of Africans from the economy and the means of production. Our existence remains a response to the lack of respect to the African child face faces here in South Africa, in the continent and the diaspora. We are a response to the criminalization of the black scheme and the permanent war which has been waged on the black people by those who have always been our historical enemies. Perhaps most painfully, our movement was formed as a necessary resistance after the painful realization that the former liberation movement had indeed become a weapon in the hands of white monopoly capital and a weapon whose target was black and poor people. We were born out of the blood of Marikana, not only to avenge our people, but to ensure that such devastating tragedy never happens again. We must we were formed as an answer to the cries of widows of Marikana who buried their husbands, sons and brothers, not knowing why they were executed without mercy. The EFF and the Marikana massacre can never be separated because it was those mine workers, those widows, and those fatherless children who, with tears in their eyes, demanded the birth of this movement. It was the blood that was soaked into the soil of Marikana that demanded the formation of this movement. As we sit here today, we mark 10 years of answering to those cries. Fellow fighters, the responsibility upon our shoulders is as old as the struggle against colonial conquest itself. I say this not to intimidate you, but to help you appreciate the responsibility you have so that you never take it for granted. You must never take it for granted that our people find hope in the red beret and the red t-shirt of the EFF. You must never underestimate that our people are intelligent enough to know that we are the true custodian of their history and we are the only capable enough to lead them into the future. The moment you take for granted the historical task that has been given to us is when we'll betray the past and fail the future. The moment you regard your responsibility as a burden and you conduct your work not out of service to the revolution, but out of compliance, is when you must know that you have taken the calling of leading the EFF for granted. You must know where we come from. You must know why the EFF exists. Otherwise, you'll make your revolutionary duty as a job obligation and as a result, nothing you do will be inspired by the ideals of liberation and love for the people. One of the most revolutionary responsibilities we have as leaders 
of the EFF is to have an undying love for our people. This is because you will never make a sacrifice for a cause you do not love and for a people you do not love. You will never sacrifice time away from your family if you resent the work that comes with liberating African people. And that work comes with being amongst Africans. If you do not love our people, you will resent deployment because deployment takes you away from those you find comfort with and takes you to the trenches where our people are suffering. You must love our people if you have any intention of liberating them. There is no liberation without love. And this task is so difficult because it requires you to love a hated people. Black people are hated and have been, and have been programmed to hate themselves. To love a black person is such a revolutionary exercise because it requires of you to love that which is socially, economically, politically dead and defeated. Black people are hated all over the world discriminated against all over the world and are described as the moral problem in society. We are a people so difficult to love because it means loving a defeated being. Our task as revolutionaries is therefore to show love to black people and show them that they remain a possibility of victory and life, even though the world designed to defeat and dehumanize them. One of the first responsibility we continue to bear, therefore, is to be present and lead the struggle of our people. The presence requires a deliberate effort to conscientize black people and make them realize their own humanity. We have a responsibility to show black people that their humanity cannot coexist with poverty, helplessness, and humiliation, and to show them that their conditions are not normal. It is through consciousness that will liberate them and show them the path to economic freedom. This, however, cannot be achieved without the vanguard movement such as the EFF. It is critical that we build a 10 years that we have achieved in existence. The foundation has been laid. Our duty is not to become complacent. Going into the next 10 years of struggle for economic freedom of African people, we must revisit our founding ideas, our purpose and our objectives, and prepare ourselves to govern. We must revisit the core principle so that we do not forget who we are and why we exist. This is important, comrade, because we are set to become a new generation of politics, not only in South Africa, but in the continent. We are set with the task of breaking the curse of post-colonial liberation movement, who become consumed with self-interest and corruption and have no ability to lead our people into promised land of independence and prosperity. The EFF is an opportunity for all African people to truly achieve liberation. We are an opportunity to build a thriving African continent that participates in the world on equal footing and not as a stepchild of the imperialists. All of you, therefore, as objectively, the best which the EFF has to offer in terms of leadership and capacity must know that you are in service of the millions of Africans who came before us and fought for our dignity and freedom. You are servants of the slain in Marikana. You are the descendants of those who were massacred in the wars of disposition, and you carry the inheritance of fighting the return, the inheritance of fighting for the return of the land. We must, fellow fighters and commissars, begin at, the, begin at the beginning and remember who we are so that the last 10 years become a springboard to liberation and not yet another historical mis mistake in the quest for liberation in Africa. And make sure to subscribe to get the latest African list, entertainment, pop culture and news. Remember to leave your suggestions on the topics you would like us to cover in the comments below.